This one worked? Yep. Okay. Meanwhile, they're going to work on a, 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 I had a temperamental microphone. In any case, um, so yeah, uh, Stephanie and I have finally moved, and so this last week we moved into our new house, and uh, we're able to find, you know, it's kind of interesting what you discover, a particular pair of shoes. Oh, the lawnmower. I, I don't know if I should be excited to see that, but, but I am. Uh, a raincoat that we finally have located, a certain book, um, it's, and even the vacuum. But it, it's pretty great. i got to tell you all, in one, one place, uh, we've been sort of vagabonds for a couple months, and so good to be finally here with you uh, in residence as well. <clears throat> Steph and I are inviting uh, folks to the Coffee, Cookies, and Conversation days uh, coming up. You'll find a clipboard out on the way in uh, with different days available, and I invite you to just come on by for uh, some time of informal conversation, chance for us to listen to you and, and get to know you and see, you know, what is it that brought you here uh, to Living Waters in this faith community, and what are some of your hopes and your dreams uh, for the congregation in the future? Just good, good time for conversation, plus Stephanie's famous chocolate chip cookies. All right. Rally Sunday coming up uh, is September 11th. Uh, it's also God's Work Our Hands Sunday, where we're going to do some uh, projects out in the community. And thank you. And uh, invite you. There's a sign-up uh, clipboard as well for that purpose. It's also the time when we kick off uh, uh, children's ministry and uh, confirmation. So that is underway. Call us if you have updates uh, for. Uh, contact information and so on for the different uh, youth and students and kids. There's, we're going to have the basic same schedule um, starting that week of the 14th of September with pre-K through 6 and confirmation classes for 7th through 9th graders. Um, it's going to be pizza. We're looking at uh, served at 530 and then 6 to 715 uh, classes and different things going on. And the 10th graders will meet also until Confirmation Sunday, which is at the end of October, and uh, I'll meet with them 715 to 815. Please get the word out. Uh, contact us if you know somebody you'd like to attend classes here this fall. <clears throat> All right. A meeting also for uh, kids and parents. It will be the 14th at 6 here with hot dogs and other accoutrements served uh, for the event. We're also uh, looking at organizing another new wine trip, um, this one to Colorado, and that's going to be uh, coming up next year, summer of 2023. And we're uh, having informational meetings, one is September 11th, 6.30, and also Wednesday, September 14th. So let us know if that's something that you'd be interested in taking part in. Talk to uh, John Meinke and Jen Kewal or myself if you need more information for that. All right, um, kind of an announcement that just popped up. Uh, Pastor Darrell uh, is, uh, is gonna have his eyes uh, worked on this week. Where are you, Pastor Darrell? Wave your hand. There we go, all right. And uh, so he's gonna, be, he's gonna be like Superman with uh, laser focus with his eyes after surgery, but he needs to get there. So if you can help him with a ride, uh, it's this Wednesday morning. Just talk to him, the, the man right there in the white and blue shirt. And uh, got it, we already got you covered. Excellent. All right. Praise God. Next Sunday, we've got two services. Uh, so the 21st, the 9.30 indoor service. And then we're also going to, for those who love the outdoors, uh, weather permitting, we'll be at 11 o'clock at the Ark as well. So two next week. Uh, if you come to the 11 o'clock, bring a chair and a friend. Any other announcements this morning? If not, uh, we sing our opening song, Go Make Disciples.
Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves his love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great are the Lord and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. We sing our Kyrie. Kyrie. friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord, Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way, Kyrie Let us seek the face of our God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of overflowing grace, we come to you with repentant hearts. Forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us for passing by the ones in need. Forgive us for setting our hopes on fleeting treasure. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and say through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. We take a, a minute for silence and meditation. There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents. By the grace of God in Christ, who gave himself up for us all, our sins are forgiven and we are made free. Rejoice with one another. We are home in God's mercy, now and forever. Amen. Remembering that in baptism we are made children of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever, and free to love one another, please make the sign of the cross on your forehead at this time. You may be seated. Uh, I invite you to be seated. And uh, Janet Anderson has uh, another mission moment for us. Piano. Good morning. I'm Janet Anderson, a worship pianist here at uh, Living Waters. And I just have wonderful news. Our piano is completely paid for. <laughs> 
all keys. All 88 keys, so if you would take a look at the keyboard as you go out of church, every key is accounted for with the gold uh, writing. That went so fast. Uh, some people were like, well, I wanted to contribute. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, also our other piano, our, our piano that we had here is out of the building, is sold to uh, a person and that uh, needed it and wanted it very badly. So it is gone out of the building. Wayne and I were here one morning at 7 a.m. and it was loaded by a company called Piano Movers Extraordinaire. So uh, it's gone, it's in a home and it's being used and uh, they even sent me a picture of the lady playing it that's very uh, well, gonna be very well taken care of and um, all I can say is that God has moved so fast and so wonderfully blessed us with this whole project. And uh, tomorrow we get it tuned. It's had to stay in the building for a couple of weeks before we get it tuned. So we're very excited. Thank you again. Um, God has blessed us richly with this project. And I wanna thank Pastor Jake for being such a good sport to go with me to see this piano and to be supportive of this project too. So thank you, Pastor Jake. Thank you again, and uh, I hope you enjoy the piano as we get it tuned and and uh, you know develop it. We are going to Pastor Jake and I are going to be playing some piano recitals coming up, so you can look forward to that. I better start practicing. <laughs> All right, I invite any kids who are here to come forward. Uh, come on up for children's message if you're here. Kids from 1 to 92 or above. We got some, or 102 if you like. <laughs> All right. God he raised from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you guys up here. I brought some stuff, you know. Uh, you might recognize it. Yeah. These, what are these called? Graham crackers. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Ooh, recognize these? <laughs> That's right, you'll get one. Recognize these? What are these called? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. And then finally, chocolate. chocolate. All right, chocolate, one of the best things in the world. What do you get? <laughs> and we got, a, we got a sweet roll, too. We had worked that in. So um, uh, what, at, what do you get when you put them all together? These three things. A s'more. A s'more of classic part of Minnesotan culture. <laughs> all right, so we put them all. How do you how do you make? I mean, you got to have the, a graham cracker, right, to start making a s'more. And um, which means, I think it means, I'd like some more. You ever heard of the etymology of the word s'more? I think it means I'd like some more. Somebody says so s'more. Somehow we've turned the s into an sh, which is interesting. But anyway, to have a s'more, you got to have a cracker. I mean, graham cracker, the best kind of sweet. And then you maybe get the chocolate ready. Some put it right on, some prepare it ahead of time, depending on personality type, okay, or who we are. And then, then you need this, right? So you just put the marshmallow on there and it's ready to go, right? Yeah, kind of. What, what do we have to do first? Got it. So you let it sit a little while on the, the fire, the campfire. All right, this one's an extendable marshmallow cook. It's really cool. So I can get it out over the fire 
If I put the marshmallow, might as well start, right? Make it later on. And then you put that marshmallow over the fire and it, it gets kind of toasty brown, right? And then you put it on the graham cracker with the chocolate. Then you have a s'more. Well, what would a, what would a um, s'more taste like if you didn't have the fire to cook it, the marshmallow? Pretty plain, yeah. The marshmallow gets bigger, too, when it cooks and toasty and delicious. But without that fire, it's just, a, just kind of a regular marshmallow. Well, Jesus says, we're going to hear some words from Jesus where he says, I have come to bring fire. I have come to bring fire. Sometimes you don't want fire. You don't want fire in your house where it's not supposed to be, right? Or, any, or in the forest. Um, but then there's also fire in an engine. <laughs> uh, fire that gets an engine going. And fires that can cook a marshmallow for a s'more, which gives a lot of happiness and joy. I want us to just think a little about that today, about how Jesus says, I've come to bring fire. Jesus also, you know, something about a fire, campfire, is you have people sitting around it. So that it like, you become like a family around the campfire. Jesus comes to the world too to provide like a fire, like around a campfire. Because he brings us around together. So we're like one big family around the world, right? So, all right. So think about what does Jesus mean when he says, I've come to bring fire. I think it has something to do with that too, bringing us together. All right, well, let's pray. I'll pray some words, and then you pray them too, and everybody together. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who comes to bring fire to bring us together. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming up. All right. Oh, wait. You get some of this, too. <laughs> I want you to take one chocolate bar, wait, and uh, give one away to somebody else, too. Take one for yourself and one to give away. There you go. Thanks. All right, thanks for coming up. gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 49. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. You think that I have come to bring peace? To the earth, no, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, 
But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You're only hearing what you want to hear. That's something that my mother would say to me once in a while in my childhood or others who were, you know, looking out for me. It's called selective hearing occasionally. <laughs> the kind where what was said is, if you mow the lawn, you can have some ice cream afterwards. But I just start scooping, you know. Um, all I heard was ice cream. Or if you get bees or better in school, we'll take you out to Renaud's Pizza. And I'd say before, you know, the grades going, uh, go out. So when are we going to Renaud's? <laughs> Nobody else's kids do this, right? Or we had this laundry chute. Uh, one of the greatest inventions. And sometimes I'm, my mom would tell my brother and my sister and I had to send our clothes um, down, you know, our own clothes and wash our own clothes down there. But sometimes we wouldn't throw our laundry down right after another. Uh, we, we, you know, we just put it all down there and um, we wouldn't wash our clothes promptly after we'd send our own. So this veritable chaos ensued at the bottom of the laundry chute because everybody's stuff would be mixed. And we'd been lamenting, has anybody seen my blue sock? And all these years later, I'd have to say, I'd have to agree with my mom, more than I'd care to admit, I tend to hear things that I want to hear. That being said, selective hearing is not just an issue between mothers and sons. Whole families sons and fathers, daughters and mothers, daughters-in-law and mothers-in-law. We'll have times of unity, but then also division, even about the things Jesus said and to king, uh, bring about in this world. Excuse me. Some will hear the words from the Christmas season, where they read that Jesus will be the Prince of Peace and will say, see, he just came to give me a nice feeling of peace. Well, that's true. Others will say he's talking about a different kind of peace where people will be treated with love and justice and compassion because of the things he said and because of what he calls us to do in our baptism. Well, it's both, you could say. But it's a different kind of peace, one way or another. And it's like Jesus is telling us from the get-go, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised, Christians, followers, when you experience division, too. This verse from Matthew, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I've come to bring peace, but it's a sword. I mean, but also a sword. We, we hear the words in the Gospel of Luke as well. In Luke's Gospel, it says, division is what we read today. But in Matthew, it's a sword. So this saying of Jesus is called one of the hard sayings of Jesus. Author Juan Carlos Ortiz talks about these hard sayings of Jesus, pointing out that selective hearing is also an issue in our church says a lot of Christians in the 21st century don't read what he calls the fifth gospel. Well, what's the fifth gospel? You may have learned that, that there are just four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but he says there is a fifth gospel. He says, open your Bible, look at all the verses that you've circled and highlighted and underlined. Verses like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And verses like, for uh, I'm with you always. And nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. It's all right there in those four Gospels, or two says, but the verses you do not underline, the ones you do not circle or highlight or memorize, those are the fifth Gospel. <clears throat> the fifth Gospel would be the hard sayings of Jesus. For example, most probably never have underlined the verse that says, you know, I wish you were hot or cold. 
but because you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. How many have that one memorized with verse and location? <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. Likely most haven't memorized Luke 11, or 311. If you want to be my disciple, whoever has two coats must give one to the person who has none. And it's the same with food. Ortiz says, those verses in the, are in the fifth gospel, but we would rather just hear what we want to hear. But we cannot ignore the fifth gospel, as he puts it. We just can't. Not if we want to uh, be the sort of people that Jesus calls us to be. In the earliest days of Christianity, this became pretty vivid as this new religion was spreading across the world. People were despised sometimes for following Jesus Christ. For some, your family actually had a funeral for you if you became Christian. That's how intense it got. If a person claimed to be a disciple of Jesus, sometimes they'd literally be considered the enemy and a bounty would be placed on their head. And that is still going on in the world today. Maybe not around here, but it's out there. Many could have led a life more in the shadows than they could. And a boring kind of relative peace could have prevailed. But when they came to faith in Jesus, their convictions were proclaimed and their past life was left behind in the place of the new. And sometimes that causes divisions today too. If I could ask for friends of mine, who when they became Christian, their families practically disowned them. Uh, their friends thought they'd gone nuts, that they were like fanatics or something. Such is the tension when Christ brings his velvet sword into someone's life, as someone once said. There are other tensions that Christians experience, and we shouldn't be too surprised. There are voices crying out to be heard for the sake of justice and peace. And still, still some will have selective hearing, and there will be division, as long as people have differing opinions, which is human. <laughs> and churches should be places that model respectful conversation. Well, what words does Jesus bring to this? Jesus, who said, I came to bring fire to the earth, as in the Holy Spirit. And how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth, he says? No, rather, I tell you, division. Don't be too surprised as we hash it out, as we try to follow Jesus, that we're not all going to agree on every matter on how to live out our life, our faith, because these things really matter. <laughs> you know, and when things matter to people, they feel strongly about things. But I'll take that any day over apathy. If you're committed to following Jesus in your life, it will most likely put you at odds in some way with people who don't share your convictions. And you could take the easy way and just go with the flow. But when the Holy Spirit's moving in you, it's probably not always going to be placid and without bumps along the way. It's because the hard sayings of Jesus are only hard because they call us to live by our convictions, to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. It's not a matter of hearing only what we want to hear, but to hear all of what God is telling us through the Word. And we can't just love those we want to love. We cannot serve only those we want to serve. As theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, there is a cost to discipleship. So therefore, if we want to live at peace with the world, we can just embrace the values of the world. And it would be easier that way. But if we're seeking inner peace, then that means we ought to take the road less traveled sometimes. The road where we listen to the still, small voice of Jesus and follow it. 
And when you follow Jesus, it might cost you some agreement with friends. It might affect your family. But a different kind of peace will be yours. It's a different sort of peace that I've encountered along the way. And I have to admit, I'd like it to be there more and more in my own life in following Jesus. So I'm praying that we all have that sort of peace. May God grant us the courage to follow and bring that peace that only Jesus can give. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to pray with me um, as we take some moment of prayer. I just invite you to, you can close your eyes if you want, you don't have to. Just listen to the beautiful water, the rocks and living waters of, of Jesus representing. Um, be together in community and um, reflect on the peace that Jesus gives. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we pray that you give us the peace that only you can give through your Son, such as the world cannot give. We seek unity with each other and that inner tranquility you can put there within us. We also seek to follow you, which means we may not always agree with everyone around us, and we may encounter divisions between us and other Christians even because we care so much about these things you've taught us in your word to put you first in our lives, to love and care for people, to keep and take care of your creation, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Whatever the case, help us to hear not just what we want to hear, but what you want us to hear and to seek your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing our song of the day, My Faith Looks Up to, the, to Thee.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the statement of faith. We believe in God, the Creator Spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who spoke through the prophets of old. We believe in Jesus Christ, into whom God's Spirit was poured in fullness and in power, that the whole creation might be restored and unified, and who promised that the Spirit would come and fill the faithful with power to witness to the mighty love of God. We wait on that Spirit today with longing hearts, seeking to be empowered witness to God's love in Christ, and fresh words, <clears throat> courageous actions of love and hope. Be to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings and faith around the globe and bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination and, and all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. In our joy and in our, our tears, be near us, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. We'll share the peace, but uh, just based on how, if, you, if you'd like to just give a holy bow, you certainly can. If you want to shake the hand of the person next to you, it's up to you totally. We can, whatever you feel is comfortable with. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let us share peace with one another. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, you are the bread of life, bread broken to mend all broken dreams, broken people, broken homes, and broken hearts. Break the good news lovingly to all people that you are nourishment to anyone who hungers for life. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite everyone to the Lord's table, uh, knowing that with the bread and the wine we receive the body and blood of Jesus for the strengthening of our faith and for the forgiveness of our sins. Uh, Invite our servers to come up. Uh, There is grape juice available for those who request it. Uh, Also, gluten-free, corn-free wafers available for those who request. Uh, The table is ready. We come and eat. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm, through the night, lead me appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone at 
up the river, I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious I invite you to stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. We come again to you, God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work 
that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Amen. Let us sing our benediction. As we go our way. <laughs> As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May He go before you to show you the way. May He go behind you to encourage. Beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. Now let's sing, Go Make Disciples. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Yeah.